Hi guys. Uh, is is the sound okay? Hey, Snowy Sweden. Hey, Clyde. How you doing, man? Uh, tippy, Tippy, Tippy. Uh, Nelson. Hi. Ephra. Okay, great. Uh, someone was complaining about the sound, and uh, you know, I tried to get it nice. Uh, hi, Steve. How you doing? Um, let's see. Jeffrey. Hey, Jeffrey. And Eric. <laughs> uh, and that's from Snow Eric from Snowy Sweden. Um, well, I've been busy with the grandkids, and they just left uh, from Thanksgiving. And uh, so I thought, well, let's, uh, let's see what would be a good deal. By the way, uh, I've I'm, I'm got on my um, FP Jorn Chronomet Survein uh, Platinum. I always get the, I have to go through all of that big long name. It's, it's uh, Francois Paul Friday, you know, so I have to get on my. Um... Okay, uh, one of the things that I, I, I thought would be interesting to talk about. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Flo Pierre? Flo Pierre? Um, Got the Tissot Petit Sec under your recommendation. How do you like it? I love that watch. That is <laughs> the coolest watch. Uh, and it's a it's an honest one, and it's not that expensive. Um, yes, that would be a great one. It's it's a Tissot, I think it's called the Heritage Something Something uh Petit Second Seconde, something like that. Uh, as I happily mispronounce everything, and I'm, I don't do that intentionally. Um, hey, Aunt, how you doing, man? Do I have a favorite line? Well, now, there's a lot. I mean, that's a longer. Uh, I have a favorite line in Hein, and uh, I have several favorite ones, as a matter of fact. As far as a longer is concerned, I don't know, probably uh, just the regular ones, I guess. Uh, time only, you know, nothing too, uh, uh, nothing too fancy. Uh, one of the things that, um, hey, Jay, how you doing? Uh, thank you. I was just saying uh, the grandkids were here, and so, you know, it was for Thanksgiving and stuff, and uh, I'll, I'll bring it back up for Christmas when they're also visiting. Um, that they made 42 millimeter fit of pocket watch movement, yeah. Yeah, the movement in the uh, Tissot is a um, Unitas ETA 6498, and uh, if you if you look at the Tissot ad, it's that's what they say. <laughs> that's what they say it is. So that's that's one reason I like it. But let's talk about some uh, some maybe some watches that you might want to get for um, you know sort of find a good deal on Black Friday and where you might find it. Uh, I certainly would include that to so that's pretty good. What do you think about Omega Constellation uh, Quadra Quartz Women? Well, um, you know, I, we're, the, there are several quartz watches that are really nice watches. And, but for the most part, they're sort of out of the purview of what we're trying to focus on, which is the... Um, which are mechanical watches. So, but it, and now since it's uh, Francois Paul Friday, we could talk about the uh, Elegante, I suppose. <laughs> that would be sort of fun. Hey, Carlos, how you doing, man? How's things in Panama? Nino, hi. Ugly sweater. Wait a minute. I don't, this is not ugly. Ask my grandkids. They think it's cool. Uh, I'm not going to let you wear it. That's that's what <laughs> that's what you get. Hey, what do you think of the Omega Constellation? Okay, one thing I will say, I do like the Omega Constellation. Omega Constellation, that line of watches, I think is a is a line of watches that's overlooked um, a lot. People people sort of zoom right by it on the way to the Moon Watch uh, or to the Deville, and so the Constellation is sort of a Sort of a neat one. Hi, old bud. How are things in Amsterdam? Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay. So, um, oh, I know what I was going to talk about. The um, 
one of the watches that um, Federico had is called a, let me see, it's called a Recital 12, I think, uh, by Beauvais. Beauvais, um, 1822, uh, Recital 12. And um, hey, Abdul, Enrique, how you doing? And he had, a, he had it on sale for, I forgot, around, I don't know, 11, 12, 13, right in there. And uh, when I saw it, it was it was called the Monsieur pronunciation uh, Beauvais, and it was fifty four thousand dollars. <laughs> you know, it was whoa, that's a lot. And uh, they only make them in uh, white gold and rose gold. I think I think those are the only two they had. And uh, and I was looking at it. And the movement they haul, they haul, they have is called the Virtuoso Two. And one of the things about what Beauvais was uh, trying to do, let me see if I can get that up there. Yeah, when they when they made their movement, they have a a base that uh, that they wanted to use, and they wanted to make it uh, from the get go, so you could add things to it. And I was taking a look at my movement, and it. You have to sort of, you know, where, where your um, where the crown usually goes over here. So you, to orient yourself to the rest of the movement, instead of looking at it this way, you you've got it. When you flip it over, you have to flip it over so it's it's like this. And my God, that is a really good buy. So that's that's one of my that's one of the good deals. It is a, I mean, it's not not cheap. But it's a good buy compared to uh, to some other things. Okay, uh, I bought the electric piano for Black Friday. An electric piano, and no money for watches. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, there's some other things. Uh, there's some trips I'm I, I want to go on, and um, so they're gonna take they're gonna cut into my watch money. I think. Um, Hey, Lee, how you doing? Good. See, Lee likes my sweater, Enrique. <laughs> Who was it I didn't like it? Was it Nino? Nino was Nino was picking on my sweater. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, Nino, a uh, pair. Yeah, you know, Nino, the uh, the uh, Parallel, a uh, Class T Automatic, unworn. That's a heck of a deal. Parallel is one of those funny brands that, they have some interesting, very interesting watches at some very good prices. So I think that's a good a good example of that. All right, let's see what else you got going here. Uh, hi, Clyde. Uh, the Rolex bubble has burst. Didn't you hear? I there's so much I don't hear about Rolex. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I know that the Rolex guys, the people who really like Rolex, um, you know they they. They're focused on that, and so if the bubbles burst, maybe some good deals will be uh, coming through. Maybe I can I can find a really good deal on the Prince. Uh, hey, Kyle, how's it going, Alton? Uh, yeah, happy late Thanksgiving to you too. Hey, twenty four carat, uh, <laughs> Miss Al. Uh, just got back from an amazing vacation in Sri Lanka. What a cheap country with amazing people, sights, and nature. I love Sri Lanka. I absolutely love it. Um, I was there a long time ago, right at the beginning of their civil war. And if you want some advice for travel, if you really want to get good prices on a place, go to visit them during the civil war. They have great prices. Um, hi, Watch Lounge. How you doing, man? Uh, there's this place that uh, we went to in uh, Sri Lanka. This is a long time ago. This is back in 84. Hi, Layla. And um, the we went to this place called Ratnapura where they, where they mined sapphires. And my God, that place was amazing. And uh, we stayed in this old uh, British, uh, I guess they call it a guest house or something. And they had these translucent lizards on the wall. Such a cool place. And it had butter, uh, not butterfly nets, but mosquito nets. Really exotic, and uh, it's a great and, and and the people there are just lovely, and, and the whole place is like magic. Um, hey, Forbin, 
happened to see Rich Buddy's collection review. Oh, okay. Oh, I enjoy it. All right, so let's see. What's up, guys? Um, all right, so we've had a couple good uh, recommendations. Oh, okay, you got something fourteen nine ninety nine. Yeah, that was right. That was the uh, price um, of the uh, of the Beauvais, which was I think it was, I think it was a good price. Okay, so what else is up, guys? Um, what else is going on here? All right. Um, oh. Here's a good deal. These, uh, see, can you see it or not? Yeah, this is my regulator. Uh, this is my two hundred dollar regulator, and apparently they were so popular that they they sold out about three times. And their fourth batch of these will be available uh, in um, March, but their price has gone up to two hundred twenty dollars. I knew they were going to go up in price. Heck with you, Rolex guys. <laughs> what do you know? My watch went up twenty dollars. Okay, uh, I think that the deals will be coming better in twenty twenty. Why do you think that, um, Abdul? We picked up a sapphire. Oh, you did. Oh, great, Al. You got uh, you got a sapphire there. Yeah, we had. What was those other ones? Um, there were sapphires. It was another one. Um. I forgot what the other ones were, but man, I tell you, that place is great. Okay, um, I think the deals will be better coming in 2020. Uh, uh, Clyde, if you're still there, uh, any deals on uh, Rolexes? Hey, Caliber 3135. <laughs> um, I'm looking over here I can so I can see all the lists of stuff. So I'm looking over here. I can see your comments. Uh, let's see what's going on. Um, secondhand sellers are calling nonstop with great deals. They seem to have overstock, overstock of, of, of Rolexes. Is that it? Crown and caliber, nothing too special. Okay. Uh, but that's, you know, if you like Rolexes, <coughs> excuse me, if you like Rolexes, that's good news, I guess. Uh, cause I get when I went down, I tried on a couple of Rolexes at our local Rolex place, and uh, they only had a couple, uh, and one they had I really liked, and that is the Yacht Master II. And I know that a lot of Rolex owners don't care for the Rolex, uh, for the Yacht Master II. They like the one. But the, that Yacht Master II, I got to tell you, if you really care about movements, that thing has got this incredible uh, countdown movement in it. So be aware. All right. Hey, Spring and Spring and Flotta. Macy's has good sales on uh, mid-tier watches like uh, uh, Presage, Seiko's, Tiso. I got a, a Seiko cocktail time for two hundred bucks. Uh, they're real. Yeah. Hey, that is a good deal. I love the name of that, the Rolex cocktail. <laughs> That's that just sounds like a cool name. My Rolex, um, I took my not my Rolex, but my Seiko. I took my Seiko uh, to a football game. We went to see um, uh, who was it? Uh, New England Patriots play the Dallas Cowboys. It was in freezing rain and it was miserable weather. And my wife and I ended up walking two miles in um, uh, this cold, cold rain to where they had the cabs. I mean, that, oh, I'm not a big fan of uh, the stadium in Foxborough. <laughs> Let me put it that way. Okay, um, Nino, uh, DeWitt Glorious Night Automatic. Yeah, DeWitt's a funny one. Uh, DeWitt has some amazing watches, and they have some not-so-amazing watches. Uh, but you can't find some cool things with uh, DeWitt. Um, but I got to tell you, my little Seiko 5, that thing went through that rain. We climbed 32 stories. We had really good seats. We could see all of New England. So those were the top ones. Okay, uh, the Watch Lounge. Whew, at the Watch Lounge. Okay, that's uh, – oh, wait a minute. Somebody is here from the Watch Lounge, I think. Uh, some, uh, hey, if you're from the Watch Lounge, say something. 
Okay, uh, talk of the yacht master got me to replace sales with sales. <laughs> okay, um, the what clowns? You mean an explorer? Mm, okay, who was talking about us? See, watch clowns, watch clowns. What happened to watch clowns? Well, anyway, okay. Um, oh, like I said, the one I the one I looked at. Oh, hey, speaking of news, uh, uh, Louis Vuitton bought uh, Tiffany's, I think. Yeah, they bought Tiffany's. That ought to be interesting. And because they have they have Zenith, they've got some other other kinds of, um, of, let me see, what do they have? They have Zenith and Defy Labs. They have Ublo, and I know Ublo's not that popular. Uh, they have, I think they have a oh, Bulgari now. I think that's, I think that's, uh, Louis Vuitton. Um, okay. Uh, hey, is Bruce, I know, where's Bruce? There you are. Hi, Bruce. <laughs> I didn't see you. Hi, Imani. Uh, that's, we got two people from Holland. Well, let me see if that's a, it's a phony call. I usually, whoops. Uh, oh, my wife got it. Good. Hang on. Put my microphone back. Here's I. I have a professional mic. I got it from an unsuccessful lounge singer. No, actually, I didn't. All right. Let's see. So, what's up? Uh, that new strap looks uh, great. Okay. Uh, I'm finding eBay difficult to search for watches showing only Black Friday markdowns. Hmm. Hey, Nino, okay, a Bedat and Company. How do, ah, boy, I don't know what uh, what kind of uh, stuff they have in a Bedat. Um, have you tried Hamilton Intramatic 38 millimeters ETA 2892? Oh, that sounds like a pretty good deal. But isn't the 2982 an automatic? I'm not a big automatic fan. Um, I, have, I have some, but not. This, <laughs> this is my $200 uh, regulator as an automatic. It's a good one, too. So is my Seiko 5. Uh, let's see. So what do you got? Hey, DP4547, Glossudi 60s. Um, I love the Glossudi 60s. The, um, what do they call it? Uh, Glossudi original uh, 60s. What a pretty watch. Uh, did the microphone uh, come with a beret? <laughs> yes. If you you may have noticed that it matches my beret. Um, let's see. Once a year, Citizen has a watch sale the week before Thanksgiving. Oh wow, eighty percent off most watches. This year they had uh, Bolova, Alpina, Frederick, uh, Constant. I got a twenty eight hundred dollar. Uh, wow. Holy smoke, now you tell us, okay? Now you tell us, you got, what a great deal. You got a $2,800 watch for 800 bucks. That's pretty good. Uh, what do you think of the Concorde C2? Now, the Con uh, the chronograph, there's a certain chronograph I have in mind. Um, okay, uh, the Concorde has one model that has my movement in it, my, uh, let me see if we can get the light on my, it has my Jacques 736 in it. And so Concord is, that's, that's what I always look for. Okay, let's see what else is going on here. Um, oh, let's see. I like uh, that new 36 millimeter Hamilton Pilot. Eight, but uh, at 800 bucks, that's a bit steep for a hammy. Oh, okay. Um, Trying to think what pilots watch I like. I'm not sure, uh, to tell you the truth. <laughs> I, I, I sort of like a lot of them. Uh, I like pilot watches with the great big old uh, crowns on them. Uh, the real pilot watch is probably the most realistic pilot watch for real doing real pilot stuff is something like uh, the um, Rolex Explorer uh, with the um, GMT hand on it. Just set the GMT to, uh, you know, Gre uh, Greenwich Mean Time, and, and then you got your Zulu time all set up for flying. 
Um, I'm trying to think what some other things are. Okay, we got um, what would be, oh, you know what? Are, hey, I hesitate to say this because I want to buy them all. But you can still find some great buys on on um, H. Moser's. Ooh, I love those watches. You can also find them on Panerai. Uh, not Panerai, uh, Par Parmigiani. Now, the Panerai, uh, we're going to be talking about those more on Sunday. I talked about the uh, in today's uh, video, uh, we look at the uh, the new movements uh, that they have, what I, the P movements. Um, a lot of people had some questions about Layla. Are you still here? Layla had pointed out that there were some problems with him, and I was trying to nail down what the problems were. So if anybody knows what they are, basically it sounded like they had a lot of uh, issues with it being too fast. And that could be it. Now, you got one of them has like three uh, barrels in it, uh, the three barrels, eight days. And, you know, if you got three barrels, you can have big charges at the beginning of each one. So I don't know. It's, I, I, I really don't know. Uh, I haven't read any articles or any analysis. Hey, Bill, how you doing, man? <laughs> you know, been making more watches? Hey, James. I'm looking at a longer son, but I'm concerned that I would need some serious insurance and security if I did. Oh, man, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I guess it's sort of a shame that you do, but I mean, I don't know. Uh, they're no more expensive than these. Um the A Longas, and I'd rather have a FP Jorn and A Longa. I don't know why, but that's me. I'd rather have a Lang and Hein, uh, like a Georg or something like that. You can really see the movements, but I gotta admit that A Longa just those are sweet watches too. Okay, uh it's not a nice world out there, James. <laughs> no, it's not. Hi, Panos. Uh Jonas has a Beauvais 1930 diamond studded with Chinese dial for holy smoke. Yeah, well, I mean, if, you, if you're okay with the diamonds, uh, but, you know, the thing about these, oh, first of all, they're, they're wonderful watches to have, okay? And it's the, um, the 1930, there are two kinds of 1930s. There's a 1930 uh, 30s uh, Fleurier, which is this one which has the bow and crown here and then the um, the bar lug at the bottom. To me, that's the one to get, okay? Now, um, without the diamonds and um, brand new, these you can find some really good deals on these. What I would do um, is to talk to them. Now, if you want the diamonds, uh, that's cool. I mean, for that price, that's pretty good. Uh, but, but I'd still negotiate with them. There are a lot of people in Reno, but all these people don't negotiate. Everyone negotiates. It, it just, it's just a matter of how you go about it. Um, you, you can't, I don't think, I, some people can, I guess. They just go in and they say, hey, uh, I don't want to pay that much. I'm not going to give you that much for the watch. That's not much negotiation. Uh, or some go and say, hey, I saw it cheaper somewhere else. <laughs> you can always say, well, why don't you go buy it there? There are a lot of different ways to negotiate. And, and I think the best way is to figure out what you can afford and then slowly <laughs> go around it. Me, this one one of my favorite deals I got, I said, saved a lot of money on it. Took me over a year to negotiate on it. The poor guy. <laughs> He wanted, I think he, was, he wanted me to go away. Okay, he's looking at a chronograph, but uh, can live with a diver's watch as I can uh, tie my eggs perfectly. <laughs> yeah, hey, Amoni, that's a good one. Uh, a chronograph as an egg timer. I I, I use my uh, mono retropone, uh chronograph. That's the only chronograph I have. Uh, and it's it's got some neat things. By the way, uh, Clyde had told me about um, column wheel versus um, cams and um, uh, chronographs. And the 
the column wheels seem to be in just about all of them now. I don't know if they make any with the cams anymore, but um, uh, that's sort of an interesting, interesting thing on it. It's a Fleurier Pano. Oh, come on, man. I, come on. The phone. Uh, my wife is afraid if I pick it up, I'll, I'll go. I, I, I got this thing with this Nigerian prince who's sending me a lot of money. <laughs> Okay, uh, I would say no on both accounts. Uh, however, they are a good brand. Better Buy, I uh, used Ublo, uh, have had a big bang, bang ceramica myself. Uh, great watch, but not worth the price. Okay, would you consider Frederick Piguet movement in Brigade watches as in house? Yeah, uh, yes, I would. Uh, here's why. Um, Frederick Piguet actually used to own Breguet at one time. Wait, it was not, not Breguet, but Blanc Pond. Um, and <clears throat> no, wait a minute. Was that right? Yeah, they own Blanc Pond. Uh, you know, that's something else. Uh, Carlos, I think we've, as collectors, we have got to rethink this whole notion of high horology. That, it took me a while. Uh, but that is something I've come to really question that concept. Because if you have a watch that with some good craftsmanship and other kinds of things that are important, because I, I think high horology, suddenly we're focusing on, you know, what is high horology? Um Rather than certain other things that I think are probably more are more important, or what is it about high horology, or for ourselves as collectors, not as a marketing tool, which I think essentially is what it is. Um, let's see, affordable glycine, uh, glycine. Um, yeah, I you know there are a lot of affordable watches with ETA movements, and there's. As long as you know you're getting an ETA, you can get a good one. I I'm almost ready on a uh, with ETAs. Why not make your own watch? Uh, there's a watch that I am actually going to um, do some stuff on. What is this? Let's see. Show uh, something. They had a thing at came which said show hide. Um, I was thinking about buying a Panerai. Nigerian uh, princes prefer Rolex. They don't. <laughs> All right, sorry. Uh, affordable Flyger. Okay, you know, Flyers are cool watches, though. I like pilot watches, so, you know, that would be a, a possibility. Uh, Bill comments about it really makes me want, want a Doxa. Yes, I love Doxas. Um, you know, it, it, it's funny is that I, I don't think that you know, as collectors, we we should listen to the marketing departments of their hyperbole that comes out of these watch companies. The more they come out with it, you know, the more I think, man, let me see, you know, what do we want? I mean, what is, we really have to do some work to figure these things out. Could you say something or delicate and dedicate uh, an episode about service costs? of high horology <laughs> watches. Oh boy. Um, you know, there, there are a couple things. Um, if I, I think everybody who's a really a serious collector needs to take up watchmaking, take a course in watchmaking. So you know what, you know, what you're looking at right here. There's a, a, a little regulator on here. That's a screw. Now, my Beauvais has, has, runs a little fast, okay? But I don't want to pop that sucker open and do it myself. Um, however, I do know that I, I've, I've worked with ETAs and uh, Siegel movements and got those things down to better, better than any of my other ones in terms of being spot on. They're not too fast. They're not too slow. They're just right. And they stay that way uh, and until, I guess, something happens. But, um, you know, I, I, and, and I've got 
my 84 year old watchmaker who who operates without a, without a uh, time grapher and just <laughs> gets it right in the middle. So <laughs> I don't know. I'm probably not the person to listen to. On the other hand, with my um, FP Jorns, man, I spent a bundle uh, to get them done. I got it done right. I had two of them done. I had this, uh, my uh, Chronomat Surveying done and my um, uh, Chronomat uh, Resonance done. That Resonance, man, I wouldn't let anybody touch that except uh, FP Jorn. And uh, it costs a lot of money. I'll, let me just put it that way. Um, a whole lot. So the... But what I do with all my other watches, I had a watch, a really expensive watch, and all of a sudden it stopped for no reason at all. And I took it to my to my guy, and I said, "You know, was, this thing just stopped." And he goes, "Something magic, and suddenly it's working again. <laughs> it's been fine ever since." Find a local watchmaker, really. I mean, try to find no matter where you are, because like I said, mine is eighty four years old. He's from Portugal. Uh, he goes for a walk at uh, at a certain time, so I know when to go get him. <laughs> He's great. Okay, what do we got? Hey, Caliber, see, further uh, to Carlos SS question, we can reasonably expect more cross-pollination of movements among Swatch Group brands and also among Richemont brands. Good point, Caliber, 3135. That's a great point. You're right. Is that a good thing? Um Boy, is that a good thing? Yes and no. Um, I think that you know when you, when you look at the craftsmanship that came out of um, Lang and Heim before they fired the only guy who was a really world class watchmaker, Marco Lang. That is amazing uh, stuff that they have. Look at all of the variety of the movements and the. The, you know, they have a remontoir, they have a, I mean, they, they can do a, a tourbillon without even breathing hard. And so you have all of these really neat things that these individual watchmakers do. Now, on the other hand, another possible argument is, well, if a, if, if a company that's owned by Swatch or Richemont, and like the Val Fleurier that they started for uh, Richemont watches, Okay, are those are those watches uh, really have the kind of craftsmanship that you want? Now, Vasseron Constantin has one in their bottom level fifty six. They they do use a Val Fleurier. They say that they uh, have done a lot of work themselves on it, and I'm sure they've done something, but. You know, it's <laughs> same watch going in, something that costs a lot less. I don't know. I, On the one hand, if they really had some top craftsmanship it, coming out of Val Fleurier or, or coming out of Swatch for that matter, and they sort of had a craftsman line of movements that were, you know, they spent a lot of time and a lot of money on developing, then that a single watch company couldn't do, then I think it might be a good thing. Hey, Britt, uh, where did you take a uh, watchmaker class? I've taken two. Uh, one I simply was an online one that they have at, um, ah, forgot the name of the place. It's on It's on one of those uh, videos that I did on uh, making your own watches. And the other one I took um, that the Horological Society of New York had this really great uh, weekend class. And uh, we took apart a uh, 6498 and put it back together again. That was a fantastic class. Uh, you can find them all over the place. And the ones online, now I destroyed the, the Salida in that, uh, what are they called? I forgot the name of the company uh, that we did it with. It, it's, it's, a, um, uh, it's done through Auto for, uh, Fry, I think. Uh, but that, you know, it, it, they have an option. You can either use a uh, Solita 210, I think, 210-2, or get a 6498 or 6497. Do the latter. The bigger the watch move, the more, I mean, these little parts are just these little bitty parts in the uh, 
that happened to be in a smaller movement, and they they disappeared really quickly. Um, smash the likes, pe peeps. Hmm. Uh, would you see how to show on a repair experience with watch companies? A friend had horrible experience with a high horology company. Okay, yes, I have heard horror stories, really horror stories. Uh, I won't tell you the watchmaker that I, because the guy who was telling the horror stories isn't the most reliable person. But uh, I'll tell you with F.P. Jorn, man, you take an F.P. Jorn and you do pay a lot, but they are so good. And they give you a guardian angel. <laughs> there was this, and I met the guardian angel. And man, anyway, um, I can't talk about that. And my watch doesn't, my, my wife doesn't watch these recordings. <laughs> I'll be dead duck if she ever does. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Yeah, it really does say, I uh, think it, yeah. What they do when you when you take a watch in, uh, when you send a watch in, if you're in the United States, they have a, uh, uh, service center in Miami, and uh, so you send it down there to them. And the, what they do, the first thing they do, they take a picture of your movement and everything in your watch, and then they tell you how long it's going to take, and they deliver it on time. Now mine, <laughs> they also had a stupid hurricane came and knocked mine back a month. <laughs> My luck. Okay, what else you got? I need a 2824 movement to replace the one in a pilot watch my brother gave me. Is there any best way to save money on a new 2824? Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, you moody. Um, let's see. Yeah. Oh, Bill A, by the way, uh, Mark uh, Lovick, uh, Watch Repair Channel. That guy is great. That's a good one. Um, yeah, in terms of where you get your movement, I, I don't think you can get a like a twenty four twenty eight uh, right from um, uh, directly from uh, ETA. You have to get it through like I I, I got mine uh, through eBay or someplace like that. But they got a lot of them out there. Um, or you can buy a, a, a Chinese knockoff of it. I do that a lot because I break them at, a, at an alarming rate. <laughs> Scoot away and pew, out goes some parts. <laughs> and nobody knows where they go. Um, you have any advice on watch winders? Boy, you know, I use my watch winder a lot. If, if I have, like when I was uh, getting the timing on my... Um, Christian Vanderclaw uh, series uh, 1974. When I was getting that, I wanted to be sure, you know, through the whole month that I, uh, the entire uh, moon cycle. And I just, I don't know, I just, I just use a winder. Now, a lot of people say winders are terrible. They wreck your watches. I hope not. Uh, the mine haven't been wrecked by it, but I don't have a lot. I have some. Um, in fact, some of my favorite watches happen to be automatics. Uh, both of my uh, uh, Parisianis are automatics. My Harry Winston's automatic, and my uh, Kristen Vanderclaw is automatic. But the rest of them, except for my two hundred dollar <laughs> little uh, regulator uh, and, and my uh, Seiko Five, those are automatic. But everything else, I, I, tr I try to get uh, hand wound. Hand wound is makes you pay attention to your watch, I think, in a good way, and I enjoy it more. Okay, watch lounge. I have a uh, world watch winder I paid close to 100 bucks for and never use it. Okay, uh, Wolf. Yeah, Wolf. Wolf. I, I got my wife a Wolf um, uh, a watch box, a watch case. Those are nice. Okay, just wind your watches once in a while. No need for winders. Okay. Uh, I have a very cheap winder I got on Amazon. I never use it unless I need to uh, keep a watch wound for whatever reason, like before travel. Okay. Hey, and that's something. How you doing now? <laughs> um, 
Okay, well, let's see. Oh, boy, we've been going a long time here. All right, now on, uh, what's today, Friday? Okay, uh, we've been, been doing a lot of talking here. Uh, listen, uh, now tomorrow uh, we're going to have a regular uh, discussion. I wanted to, what I wanted to discuss tomorrow, if you're interested, is, uh, now let's see, what was it? Um, oh, yeah, I wanted to talk about limited editions. And so if that's something that's interesting to you, um, like to like to talk about it. Hey, crappy. <laughs> you're, I'm sorry, you're a little late, man. We're just about winding up. For collectors, what about uh, nice watch boxes or watch rolls? Oh, boy, yeah. You know, uh, Wolf does make some good ones. I uh, Oh, you know where I found a great, watch uh you know a little you know travel case um i found a great one uh, well, i think it was uh sax fifth avenue <laughs> out of all places there was this place called off sax uh when they take stuff on sax uh from sax fifth avenue when they have to replace it and so you get some really so i got this really beautiful uh watch case you know, another place, too, is uh, London Jewelers. London Jewelers ha has their own brand, and uh, I got my wife a, a travel case from there. So there are a lot of places. Okay, if you want a, a nice watch roll that is custom, Aaron, bespoke custom straps will make one for you and for a price. Okay, guys, uh, listen, so uh, this just is sort of uh, when the grandkids left, I thought, well, I'll, I'll have a talk. So. Um, anyway, hope to see you on Saturday, which is tomorrow, at our usual time, which will be 3.30 Eastern, and as all the other times. And um, hope to see you then. Take care.